Unless you've been living under a rock, you would have definitely have heard of ChatGPT. This AI chatbot is revolutionizing the business world like nothing we've ever seen before. And Google Ads and PPC are no exception because this tool can revolutionize the way you work with your campaign building. Let's get the two most obvious prompts out the way first, because when you think of an AI chatbot, you of course think about written language, writing, and there's only one aspect of Google Ads that requires significant writing. And that's, of course, the ads themselves. Ads are the only part of Google Ads that aren't necessarily database. They are all about what you write and how you write it. And ChatGPT can massively help you with ideation and, of course, creating headlines and descriptions for your ads. So starting with headlines, I've got the prompt on my other screen. I'm going to copy and paste it over into GPT and we can take a look. So this is for writing a headline and the first thing you want to do is make sure that GPT understands the kind of business you're writing for. This is a very big part people miss when writing prompts for ads. This example I'm using is for an, an emergency locksmith based in London. If you're locked out of your house then this is the kind of company you would call to get you back in your house. So first of all I've told GPT this is the service I'm promoting. And then the second part of this prompt is the unique selling points of the business, which is really important because you want to make sure GPT understands the kind of business that you're promoting, but also what they're good at. So I've got my bullet points here, 24 hour locksmith, 30 to 60 minute response time, no call out charge, work guaranteed. So these are the unique selling points. Another unique selling point is that the locksmiths are DBS checked. For those not in the UK, it means they get a criminal record check to ensure that the person fitting locks to your house is legit. And then further than that, I've also gone in to include pain points as well. What does the customer hate? How does this business help the customer? So starting off with this, you can see the common pain point is, of course, they're locked out of their house, not able to get back in. And finally, I've ended it with the way customers get in touch with this business is to use their website and submit an inquiry or to make a phone call. So giving them room to expand and think about call to actions as well. Finally, the prompt ends with write 20 Google Ads headlines for the aforementioned business between 20 and 30 characters long, including spaces. Now, of course, you want to maximize your, your character count in your headlines. So 30 characters is ideally what you want to target. But because GPT obviously needs a parameter, 20 to 30 is a good length because it means that it's got room to play with. And you're generally going to get a good length of headline. Without this part, you're going to get really short headlines but more than likely you're going to get headlines that are too long so let's run this prompt and you'll see the results and you'll see that they actually will fit the parameters I mentioned and they'll all be pretty much usable and even the ones that aren't necessarily usable out the box is fantastic for ideation so here's the complete list as you can see they're all within the parameters all 20 to 30 characters long they've looked at the USPs they've looked at the call to actions everything is in here and it's a really good way to generate headlines on to descriptions next let's jump back into the prompt again i won't cover old ground you know what the business example is in terms of an emergency locksmith you know the pain points of the customer that this part is the important part so we're going to write 20 google ads descriptions on the aforementioned business between 80 and 90 characters long again descriptions have a max character limit of 90 but having 80 to 90 gives it enough room and a bit of wiggle room to play with maybe they're a bit shorter who knows that's fine then the next part that's important is make sure you mention and use the unique selling points provided and also use a call to action at the end of each description that's written the, this next part is really important and that is ensure the call to action is not too hyperbolic because sometimes chat gpt can write really cringe over the top marketing content we don't want that so by saying don't make it too hyperbolic which means don't go over the top then this will make a massive difference to how it writes the prompt. And then ensure the character count limit is adhered to because when I've written prompts for this before, without mentioning the character count needs to be adhered to, then it can often go over. Even if you tell it in the first instance what the character count should be, it can sometimes go over it regardless. So it's good to reinforce that point. And then also make sure all descriptions mention the core service offered by the business. Again, ChatGPT can hallucinate. It can talk about things adjacent to the business that aren't necessarily about the business itself. This prompt ensures that it can do that. So we're going to send this prompt and we're going to publish it. And let's see what happens. So you'll see here it's going to write the descriptions and they're all going to be basically usable. And again, if they're not all usable, you can use this as an ideation jump off point to start writing your own content.
So again, here's the output. You can see all of them end with a call to action that's non-hyperbolic. It's not crazy, cringy content, all covering the service provided. And the descriptions are of the requisite character length as well. So this is a perfect prompt to create all of the descriptions you need in campaigns. And again, as I say, it's a jump off point. You don't necessarily have to use this. You have to take tone of voice into consideration, many other things, but this is a great way to start. Have you ever gone through a search term report with thousands of keywords in there and noticed a trend in those keywords? For example, the prime example is you've noticed that loads of brand names and business names keep coming up in your search terms reports and you don't want to necessarily bid on competitor terms or on brand names of the product or service you provide. You might want to do that in future, but you might want to put them into a separate campaign. By using the prompt I'm about to show you, you can quickly identify those offending keywords and it can be adapted for all kinds of different things within the search terms report because GPT can analyze that data and see specific trends within those keywords. So let's take a look and see how it works. Okay, so for this next prompt, I'm going to copy and paste it over from my other screen and then break down what it does. So this is going to provide a list of search terms I'm going to provide to the GPT and it will analyze the terms to make sure they don't contain a person's name, a business name or a brand name. The client didn't want to bid on any of these things. And of course, I noticed in the data they weren't converting. So the pain point for me was going through the search terms reports and eliminating names and brand names as they come up because you can't preempt it. Google doesn't understand how many brand names are out there. They can't show you anything in keyword data that they have for the majority of these types of search. So I'm going to drop in these searches and I'm also going to mention at the end of this prompt, do not skip any terms because sometimes GPT likes to skip stuff because it's lazy. And also make sure the, the list provided when we've identified the terms from the list I'm about to share with GPT, make sure they don't add any new ones in because GPT is prone to hallucination and this will make sure it controls for that. The last part of this prompt is important as well because GPT likes to show off sometimes and explain in loads of detail or with code how it works things out, what the logic steps were, what the process was. Doesn't matter, we just wanna know it's done and make sure it's done. So we want to make sure we're saving time by making sure the speed of the response is important. Do not show you're working, just do the calculations based on the parameters provided. So with that said, let's drop in our keyword list. So I'm gonna get that from another screen as well. Paste that in, it's in there. I always advise if you're gonna analyze data in keyword list form like this, you should be able to only use 500 at a time or so. It gets better responses, faster responses, causes less issues. So I'd, I would do them in batches of 500. So let's run the prompt. And that prompt will start running. Let's go down the page. Here we go. So here is the list. It's identifying all of the terms in the list that meet, that meet the criteria. So of course, this still needs a bit of a, of a review because it might make mistakes. It might think things are brand names when they're not, but it makes it a lot easier than analyzing hundreds of keywords. You're only analyzing the things that GPT has identified, which makes life a lot easier. So as you can see, all of these brand names are being found from the list and being output right here. And there you have it, guys. They are my most time-saving prompts I use for ChatGPT in my day-to-day -day Google Ads campaign management. There are more prompts I use for analysis and other things as well that are a bit more advanced, which I'll cover in another video. I wanted to keep things more simple today to get you started using GPT for your Google Ads tasks. So let me know in the comments which one was your favorite or whether or not you even agree with me using GPT when managing Google Ads accounts. Like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to head over to darren-taylor.com for PPC consultancy. And then I'll see you guys on my next video.